just got to the meetup game, Rampage and Mariano meetup game. We're playing some 2 5 or 1.2 KD. It's the biggest game I've ever played by a long way. It's a massive game. There's so many people here. The room is incredibly nice as well. Hopefully, we can have a good session. See how it goes. So here's my first ever hand in a vlog and I forgot to turn on my video before opening the hijack to $15 because I'm shit at this and the big blind calls. The flop is 10-3-5 with two spades and when the big blind checks, I elect to bet around half the pot. I tried to bet 16 using a one, but the dealer tells me I'm a dickhead and throws it back at my stack. I do this all the time in the UK and people always give me shit for making the dealer's job more difficult. Apparently they have no time for that here and who can blame them? So $15 it is. I think you can make a case for checking this back, but a hand benefits from protection. We can easily get value from worse hands. And if we do get raised, we have a backdoor straight and flush draw to defend with. The big one decides on a call and we're off to the turn, which is the ace of clubs. A decent turn for my range, although not a great one for my hand. So when the big blind checks again, I don't see any reason to keep betting and check it back. The river is the jack of diamonds and my opponent checks for a third time. I think our hand shows down more than well enough here. So I check pretty quickly. Sevens are good and we take down our first pot of the night. Onto our next hand and the host of the meetup game Mariano has moved over to our table and opens up to $10 under the gun. I do expect him to be messing around a little bit tonight because it's his game after all, but at the same time it's early and he might start off by playing standard. I'm aware that he plays a lot bigger than this generally and won't be afraid of putting the money in, so when I look down at Jackson the small blind, I prepare my anus and 3 bet to $45. I usually hold my cards with my left hand, but I realise that this is going to block a lot of the action, so I'm starting to feel a little out of my comfort zone already and that's before Mariano instantly sticks it up me, making at $150. We're 1.2k deep, so 5 betting would be absurd. Folding just as ridiculous, so I call the 150 and we're off to a flop, which is 997 with two hearts. I check it over to Mariano and he bets $100. This is not my favorite spot in the world already, but I know I have to continue in some capacity. I think without a heart, I would always raise versus this sizing, as my hand needs a lot of protection. But I think with a heart, I'd prefer to call. At the same time, I don't really want to call and have Mariano check back the turn, see the last two cards really easily with a hand that almost certainly has a chunk of equity against me. Coupled with the fact that Mariano is here to play and is a lot looser than the average live player, and I think he could easily float ace king with a heart in position here. I decide on a race to 285. I think this sizing does a good job of protecting my hand and putting Mariano's overcard combos with a heart in a tough spot. I might be stretching here and it's an interesting decision point because we do lose the chance of Mariano to continue bluffing, but I think it's okay. Mariano hits us with the good raise and the quickly folds, so I guess I'm a little sad that he had a hand that could have continued bluffing, but again, my hand was vulnerable and we do get to take down a nice pot and move on to the next hand. Shortly afterwards, I'm dealt ace jack off suit in the big blind, and when the small blind limps, I raise it up to $20 and he calls. The flop is king five deuce with two hearts, the small blind checks, and I think checking and betting are both reasonable, but I choose to continue for $15. The small blind calls instantly and the turn brings the jack of hearts, giving me a pair. The small blind checks a second time, and I think on the flush completing card, betting here is too thin. I'd also probably just have to fold to a raise, which would feel awful, so I decide to check it back. The river is a clean brick, the two of clubs, and the small blind again very quickly acts, this time deciding on a bet of $35. I'm not thrilled, but after working out the size of the pot and realizing this bet is only 50%, I'm not exactly thinking about folding, and I can't raise either, so I flick it in. I can't fold for half pot. The small blind announces that I'm good, flips over a very ambitious ace nine offsuit with no heart, and we scoop another little pot. It's definitely been a decent start to my vlogging life, and it looks like things can improve still when I'm dealt king queen of hearts. It falls to me on the button, I open it up to $15 and the big blind calls. Flop is king three deuce with two spades and my opponent checks. I'm definitely going to be betting here, and honestly I like a bit of a larger sizing, but a mixture of me being terrible and vlogging nerves result in me betting a measly $10. Not the end of the world, but I think a larger bet is better here for sure on a slightly more connected board. The big blind calls and the turn is a nine of spades, and the big blind checks it over to me again. This is the kind of card that my hand needed a bit more protection from on the flop with a healthier bet size, but now that we're here, I think going either way is fine. I decided on a check to control the size of the pot since we're very deep and I don't particularly want to get raised. Also, bet check bet lines tend to get a little less credit and my opponent may be tempted to bluff on the river as well. The river is the seven of clubs and my opponent checks a third time. We pretty much always have the best hand now and after betting small on the flop and checking the turn, it's time to get some value. I decide to bet $45 just under the size of the pot and my opponent comes out of a small tank with a call. King Queen is obviously good and we take down another one. I get a seat change to the empty chair next to me to get a better view of the table for the vlog, and I'm quickly rewarded when I look down Ace King of Hearts. The undergun player from the last hand, who I've played a few pots against now, limps, and I ISO to 20 from the small blind. The big blind gets out of the way, and my under the gun nemesis calls. The flop is pretty decent, Ace, Eight, Six with two diamonds. I'm definitely going to bet, and for some ungodly reason, I can't seem to count the size of the pot in my head because I end up betting pot, 
when I just wanted to bet something over 50%. I actually only noticed this once I'd written up the hand afterwards and I had to check the video back just to be sure that I'd actually done it. And alas, I had. My nemesis decides he wants to come along regardless of the extortionate price I've given him. And the turn is the eight of clubs. Again, not an ideal turn by any means. And the eight is definitely a better card for under the gun range than mine. He could have limped something like eight, nine or eight, seven suited and called the ISO. Whereas I'm probably more likely to have checked the flop with those hands. I checked for pot control and some deception and he quickly checks back. The river is a lovely looking super brick, the four of clubs, and it's time to go for max value again. I don't think there's any way my opponent would check back an eight or something even stronger on the turn because we're very deep and I think he'd want to build the pot. It's much more likely he has some kind of suited ace after calling a large flop bet or maybe a small pair or a six that might get sticky when I go bet check bet. He paid me off in the last hand and I'm backing him to do it again when I go for $125 on the river just over the size of the pot. Feel free to listen in to the riveting table conversation while my opponent debates his river situation. People eat intestines all the time. Like, mm. you get pot dogs having intestines. I'm not a huge job. I really chicken, chicken liver and rice. The big blind finally decides on a call and my ace king is too strong. I actually played again with this guy later in the week and he was kind enough to tell me that he had ace six of clubs in this hand for a counterfeit two pair. So it turns out the eight was pretty good after all. We rake in another healthy pot and things are looking good for the boys. I'm up to over 1.5k and I'm feeling confident. In the next interesting hand, I look down at king 10 off on the button and open to 15 and my nemesis in the big blind calls again. We see a flop of king, jack, eight, two clubs and my opponent checks. I think both betting and checking have merits here, but I'd probably prefer to bet. On this occasion though, I do check. The turn is the six of hearts and he checks again. And this time we definitely need to bet. Our hand is almost always best and there are loads of hands to get value from. So I bet pretty big, $25, and my opponent calls. The river is a not so nice looking jack of hearts and my nemesis checks a third time. The backdoor flush got there, but more importantly, I think the jack is just a card that my opponent will have really often. I think he would always check call the turn with a jack, even against my sizing. And I just wasn't sure what I was gonna get value from. He'd already paid me off a few times, so I figured the odds of me getting a light call may be also reduced. With that all said, I check like an absolute child and table my king, which is obviously good. My nemesis looks at me like I'm a piece of shit on his shoe which I'm sure is a mix of disgust at my check and the fact that he's been losing to me all night. I don't know if the check is all that bad but we do get to take down another small one and the mini heater continues. This next hand is a really weird one. I open the hijack with king 10 of diamonds to $15 and a guy to my left wearing a backwards cap who I've not been involved with yet and hasn't been all that active makes it 35. He folds back to me and given the price I'm getting I think making the call is the best option so I do and we see a flop of eight six deuce with two spades and a diamond. Probably a better flop for me than my opponent, but I'm not going to lead this one. I check and backwards cap bets $40. I think folding is a little premature with two overs and a backdoor straight and flush draw, but maybe it's not the worst thing ever. I'd rather have a little more direct equity than what my hand has to raise, so I make the call. The 10 is a 7 of diamonds, which is a pretty good card for my range and my hand. I think about leading here for a bit, and I think it's a pretty reasonable option. Although it's not like my opponent won't have straights himself. I do decide to check again, and backwards cap checks it back. The river is an unfortunate 3 of hearts, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to bluff. I don't think a pair is all that likely to fold on such an innocuous river. So the main thing I want my bet to achieve is to fold out some ace high that fired a continuation bet and check back the turn. If I wanted a pair to fold here, I'd have to bet extremely large, which I think is a reasonable play, but I'm not in love with trying to get my live opponents to fold good hands. I decide that $105 should be enough to do the trick. Now you can't quite see this from my angle, but as I'm moving my bet towards the line, my opponent picks up one green chip and hovers it over the middle. It all happened pretty quickly, but you can see me briefly hold my chips back. In that split second, I'm wondering if the forward motion of my action constitutes a bet, and if it would be acceptable to take it back or maybe reconsider and bet larger. I also have no idea if my opponent's action is binding at this point or whether he's just trying to angle to stop me betting myself. I decide to just drop in the bet to avoid any complications with rulings and he briefly takes his chip back away from the line. Before I can think about how bullshit this entire situation is, he tosses the chip into the middle. I get ready to muck my hand and he shows ace king high. Honestly, for an orbit after this, I was wondering whether you could see my cards on my phone screen that I was recording from. But after checking it a few times and seeing some other hands from this guy, I realized it was probably just an angle shooting mega station. Probably about what you should expect from someone wearing their cap backwards at the poker table. Regardless, we lose a pot for once and I'm feeling pretty hard done by at this point, but there's still plenty of action left in the night and we're going to be right in the mix. I'm still shaking off the weirdness in the last hand when I'm dealt pocket eights under the gun. I open to 15, my nemesis calls from the hijack and everybody else folds. The flop is 10, 7, 7, two spades and I check. Anyone that knows how I play will know I'm checking range in this spot after countless conversations with Ben and I think it works really well. He checks behind and the turn is a pretty safe looking four of hearts. I think we have a pretty clear bet here now for protection and value and my nemesis has shown himself to be quite sticky as well. I bet $20 and he snap races to 55. Not the most comfortable spot, but apart from pocket fours, I'm not really sure what he's saying he has here. I think a 10 or a seven would want to bet the flop. So I'm still feeling okay about my hand and maybe he's just sick of me winning pots against him. 
I decide to call the 55 and see what happens. The river's the six of hearts and I check it over to my nemesis who briefly considers something before checking it back and my 8-8 eight eight is good. Not really sure what he was up to on the turn but probably an air ball that didn't feel like bluffing the river. No matter what it was, I'm scooping another pot and we move on to the next one. In the next interesting hand, we have deuces on the cutoff. I open to 15 and my nemesis is back at it, this time with a raise to 40 from the small blind. His sizing is way too small here, but even if he makes it 60, I still have an easy call being this deep in these positions. So I call the 40 and we head off to a flop of 8, 6, 4 with two diamonds. My nemesis checks and I think I have a good hand to start bluffing with here. The board is a pretty good one for me generally and there are a lot of turn cards that my opponent won't like to face more bets on. I also have a diamond which is less important but certainly worth noting. I bet $35 which might be a tad small to start exerting the kind of pressure I'm looking for and nemesis calls quickly. Turns a great card, the five of clubs. I certainly think I'm likely to have the advantage in 7x here and I have a hand that pretty much can't win without significant help on the river. After my bet on the flop, I don't think there's any option but to keep barreling here. So when my opponent checks again, I go for a bet of $115 into $155. I don't need to bet much bigger than this on this board and I definitely wouldn't do so if I had a seven in my hand. So I like the sizing. After a little thought, he does let it go, which is thoroughly ideal as I had already started coming to terms with the fact that I'm going to have to unload the clip on the river. I haven't played any huge pots against this guy, but he literally hasn't won a hand against me, which I can't imagine has been all that enjoyable. Apart from that ridiculous pot against backwards cap, I've steadily been accumulating chips all night and feeling really good about my table and my play. I'm up to about 1.8k when I'm dealt ace king of clubs and under the gun a player from Quebec who I've not seen much of all night opens up to $15 and I three bet to $45 from the cutoff. Backwards cap does backwards cap things and cold calls the 45 on the button and it's back to Quebec. He's clearly not happy with the current price of poker and instantly reaching for his green chips. He's also very deep to start the hand sitting with around 1.6k so he has the potential to make this situation quite uncomfortable for me. He four bets but only to $100 which is a massive let off for me. The prospect of a tight player snap four betting under the gun is not something that thrills me. I have absolutely no intention of five betting, but I'm comfortable seeing the flop for $100. I do have backwards cap behind me, but there is likely zero chance he back five bets and almost certainly won't be folding to the $100 after I call, giving me an even better price to hopefully make a big hand multi-way. I'm fully aware at this point that I'm likely to be in horrendous shape versus under the gun, but let's see what we can make happen. I call the $100 and backwards cap, as expected, calls behind. The flop is jack three deuce with two clubs and I'm ready to lose some money. I've not done a great job making flushes in the last year and now would be a great time to change that. Quebec starts out with a bet of $100 and I have just an easy call. I'm expecting under the gun to have exclusively aces and kings, maybe queens. And I'm definitely not looking to get it in against that range on the flop, especially in position. Not a close decision. I call the $100 and backwards cap quickly gets out of the way. The turn is an exceptionally disappointing four of hearts and Quebec predictably reaches for more chips. Thankfully, he's again kind with his bet sizing, this time firing out $250. Nothing's changed here. I'm never raising. I'm never folding. But I take some time to think about how good it would be to drill the absolute fuck out of this river before sliding another $250 into the middle. We also have the added bonus of some extra outs against kings with our wheel draw and also some chop outs against aces, which is definitely something. The river is the most sexual thing I've ever seen in my life. The three of clubs and my opponent instantly checks in a very fuck this river kind of way. I now enter the weirdest tank of my life, trying to figure out how much is in the pot and how much the effective stack is. My instinct is to shove, obviously, but I just want to make sure it isn't a ludicrous overbet before I do. Also, while I'd absolutely never bluff this spot versus this opponent, if I was going to, I would definitely want to think about it for a little bit before banging over a grand into the middle. In other words, I want him to think I'm contemplating a bluff, but all I'm thinking about is Vegas and the fucking Mirage, which is conveniently located around the corner. Taking my time seemed the reasonable thing to do considering how massive this pot was, and after what math I am capable of was done, it was time. All in. I shoved for $1,100, the biggest single bet I've ever made in my life. All I had to do was fade a snap from Jax, which would be insane, but even that would be exceptional content, so I really couldn't lose at this point. Also, I didn't think he would four bet Jax pre, so I'm obviously very confident in having the best hand. The main thing I'm worried about is him finding a hero fold with aces or kings, but I think a guy sitting there for five hours playing not many hands and finally finding one of those big pairs would find it hard to let go on the river. My suspicions are confirmed when he quickly flicks in a chip. I turn over my ace king of clubs, Quebec mucks, and I win the biggest pot of my life. Sadly, Quebec then has the misfortune of watching some British dickhead pick up his phone and start recording the dealer shipping his entire stack to me, but the $3,200 that's about to be resting in front of me allows me to make my peace with it. As I'm assembling a castle with his chips, Quebec starts to talk about the hand. Mm, I should have believed you, but I did not. You have aces? It's really unlucky, man. 
So unsurprisingly, he did have aces and we got very fortunate to bang it off on the river. As I said, I've been bricking these flush draws for a good nine months now, so I won't be apologizing for it. And I have to say this hand felt pretty fucking good. I took a break from the table just to process what had happened, record my live thoughts for the vlog and see what Beam was getting up to. Yeah. What happened, Beam? Beam? Oh, we just oh. Split oh. What happened? Talk to me. <laughs> you just pissed all over me, <laughs> Well, I've just played a three and a half K pot. That was fun. <laughs> we won it, which is great. I don't think I'm gonna be in many spots like that again. Should be a good vlog. I don't think I'm gonna make any more because it's like gonna be the best thing I can ever make. So some pretty sick hands, but one absolute juice I was looking for the scene. We're going back in now after a quick break to, <laughs> to get my head to have around that and also to have a piss because I don't have to keep dying. But yeah, let's go again, see what we can make happen. Heading back to my enormous stack, we still have a session to refocus for and some very interesting hands to come. So let's take a look. The rest of the hands are all a bit strange in their own way. And first up, it folds to my good friend Rob on the button. I run into him sometimes at Aspers and he's always a pain in the ass to play against he's absolutely capable of getting out of line i was pretty surprised to see him extend his bum hunt to resorts world on this particular evening but here we are he opens to 15 dollars, and honestly i could probably just get out of the way but folding a suited six gapper against rob just doesn't seem quite right so we flick it in rob you want it i want it you get it and just slur the flop is 10 9 3 all clubs and when i check rob tosses in five dollars i don't think raising is on the agenda so i call the five and we're off to a turn which is the nine of diamonds it's pretty likely i have the best hand but obviously i check again and now rob checks it back the river is a queen which is thoroughly unideal so i check a third time and he bets 25 dollars folding or calling both seem reasonable but because it's rob i just insta call because i've seen some absolute nonsense from him in the past and i'm not folding my hand after playing it like this i'd float so wide in the flop versus five dollars and then after checking twice a 10's about as good as i'm gonna have i'm pretty sure i'll get run over here folding in the long run so i just call i know four Fuck guys off. Yeah. unfortunately on this occasion we do get shown the ace queen i get adequately milked and it feels pretty bad our next hand is not my finest hour as i open a shack of hearts under the gun and johnny vibes another popular vlogger who's been on my table for a while now calls on the cutoff i'm not really sure what his range is going to look like here and i don't personally play many cold calls from the cutoff but he is a live reg and i assume he has a pretty good idea of what he's doing the button and the blinds get out of the way and the flop is a rather disappointing king 84 all diamonds I decide to continue with a small bet, hoping to fold out some pairs that may have called that don't have a diamond, or some random hands that will obviously have some equity against me. Johnny calls, which is unideal, and we see the three of clubs on the turn. I think slowing down is in order, so I check, and now Johnny bets $45 into 57. This is a pretty slam dunk fold, so naturally I gather some chips and toss them into the abyss. Honestly, the only reason I did this was because I saw Johnny float an absolute air ball against Rob in a hand not long before this and take it away from him on the turn, and I just hate to be that guy. This isn't the best reason for getting sticky, and my hand could be completely dead already, and then be in a terrible spot on most rivers even if he is up to no good it's not like he's going to give up the river all that often and stationing off with his hand would be pretty obscene anyway i call because i hate money and the river is the seven of spades i obviously check and jolly loads up a massive barrel of 180 dollars is what i was expecting which is why calling the turn is so ridiculous now that i'm here though i guess i better think about it so let's have a listen in on my speculative thought process the problem is i bet 10 you would probably just flat but you would want to raise a bunch as well we're very deep you can't really just have an ace of diamonds that's the problem so hard to just have the ace of diamonds because you call you just don't have an ace of diamonds it's almost impossible for me to win i still kind of want to call <laughs> this would be entirely disrespectful so much more disrespectful than you understand disrespectful or disrespectful oh disrespectful call oh. So i just don't see how i can win i'm gonna fold but i'm, pr I'm pretty sad about it show me for my vlog yeah. come on for the boys <laughs> you had it that's good nice hand nice hand that would have been a disgusting call <laughs> So I obviously end up folding. Johnny shows the queen jack of diamonds, which makes a lot of sense. Although I'd certainly lean to three betting his hand. I was never close to calling this river. And honestly, this is a big part of why I hate developing flatting ranges. Reason being, I'm not sure that Johnny would flat many, if any, offsuit hands here. So we'd have to be absolutely airballing a random suited hand that wasn't diamonds for me to be winning, which I'm pretty sure he's not doing. Having said that, he has gotten me to put in $45 stone dead on the turn. So maybe there is some merit against idiots that don't think about their decisions, which is the majority of live players, apparently including me. I kind of need them to be bluffing with a bare ace of diamonds that cold called the cutoff, and I just can't see what that would look like apart from ace queen off, which I lose to anyway. Long story short, I should fold the fucking turn, but at least I didn't donate another $180 on the river to compound the error. Onto a couple of ludicrous hands to end the night, both against Mariano. It's important to note that at this point, he was fucking about massively min betting flops and turns and then making big river over bets. In this hand, I open pocket nines under the gun and Mariano min raises in the low jack. With how much he's been messing around, we could probably just four bet this hand, but the positions are pretty bad and he might just stick it up me, which I definitely wouldn't enjoy. He also asked nicely for me not to raise and he's the host after all, so I oblige and just call. Uh, no re-raise, please, sir. You got it, boss. Flop is a pretty shitty looking Queen 10-4 rainbow and I checked to Mariano who bets his standard $5. 
I don't have any options but call, so that's what I do, and we see the 10 of hearts on the turn. Not the worst card in the deck, as it's now less likely Mariano is holding one of the overcards on the board, but when he bets another $5, I'm still not in the business of raising. I call the 5, expecting the now standard river overbet, and also expecting not to enjoy it very much. The river's a 7 of clubs, a check, and Mariano bets $200. It definitely deserves some thought, so I enter the tank and try to probe Mariano for some answers, but what ends up happening is pretty funny. I have no clue what to do. <laughs> Mariano, am I supposed to call? Oh, <laughs> do you know what I have? Everyone know what he has. I have a pair. I have a better hand than pocket apes. Oh, you have two pairs. Yeah, it's a minimum. Look at all those levers. It's like a rocket ship over here. That's like a jet. Yeah, absolutely. You're flying a jet over there. So every fucker on the table knows what Mariano has. Even the dealers involved. Mariano hadn't actually shown a bluff so far, so I decided to reluctantly let this one go, preparing to be laughed at by the table and shown six high or some shit. You didn't want to hit your river. I knew I must. Nice answer. Mm -hmm. I finally get to have a look for myself, but I'm shit at vlogging, so I don't show the camera, and I see that he had 10-9 offsuit that flopped a pair and turned trips. Definitely would have felt like an idiot calling that off, but happy to have dodged that particular bullet. The last hand of the night is again against Mariano, and he opens it up under the gun to 25, which is the way the game was heading at this point. I have tens in the small blind, and I always seem to get myself in a muddle when someone opens to a larger sizing. I should just make this 100, especially as he's likely not folding anything. Unfortunately, I only make it 80, which is disappointing, but not the end of the world, and Mariano calls. I also get a pretty nice rub down from the button on my right, as at this point I have Rampage, Johnny Vibes, and Mariano on my table who are all recording. We have three vloggers in him. He's not wrong, to be fair. The flop is 6.59, which isn't the best in my range, so I decide to check, and Mariano bets the customary $5. I'm definitely raising here, and I'm not thrilled about building a huge pot with this hand, but it it just has to be done. I make it 85 and again I can probably go bigger here against a guy that is likely stationing off against most raises. My hand needs a lot of protection and this really doesn't do the job. This is definitely the weakest part of my live game that I've been able to identify as without the size of the pot in front of me or facing weird lines I tend to fuck up my sizing too often by going too small. I'm definitely working on it though so hopefully there's less instances of this in the future. Mariano calls the 85 and the dealer turns the jack of hearts which is definitely not my favorite card. I check preparing myself for the worst and Mariano kindly bets another $5. This time I think raising is a bit too risky, so I flick in the five with plans of checking the river and tanking for another five minutes against another massive river bet. The river's the four of hearts and I check, and I'm somewhat relieved to see Mariano give it up and my tens are good. I think I probably would have ended up calling this one off, so I kind of wish he blasted, but I do take down my last pot of the night and wrap up the biggest win of my life so far. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have just finished at the 2 5 Rampage and Mariano meetup game in for 1200 out for 3125. It's a pretty big juicer, definitely my best day ever. Although that's not been difficult, we've been following the other live hands I've played. At the one point, we'd had Rampage, Mariano, and Johnny Fives on my table, which was pretty fun. The game was getting pretty wild, but I was so hard that I couldn't get anything done. And then Israeli Ron turned up at the end and Bean got a picture of him, which he was really, really happy about to put to about his, his main man, Garrett. Up a couple of bags, day two. I've got another week to play, so I'm feeling good about it. Obviously, it's nice to, to get off to a good start. But a long way to go and just gonna get my head down one hand at a time and see how it goes. Gonna head out now. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. So that's it guys. Thank you everyone for watching my first poker vlog. I hope you really enjoyed it. I have the footage to make two more of these vlogs from my Vegas trip. So if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see those, then please do drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new and share it around with your friends. I would really appreciate it. My editing skill set is very limited. So it's been great to have an editor on board to make this look exactly how I wanted. I've tried to stick closely to the model of all the great vloggers out there already, but with an approach that's more in keeping with my channel. That means I've included smaller hands and a slightly more detailed thought process. Also, we've used an in-depth overlay to give as much information about the hand as possible. What I'd really like to know from you guys is what you liked and disliked about those choices and anything else that you think can be improved on. If we do make more vlogs in the future, then I'm more than happy to take on your feedback and make some changes for next time. So please leave any and all comments down below. I read and reply to all of them and I really want to hear what you think. With that said, I just want to say thank you to a few people that made this video possible. Firstly, thanks to Benabad B, without whom we'd be playing $300 pots instead of $3,000 pots. And not just for the backing, but I literally send this guy every hand that I play live and I get feedback on all of them and it's made me such a better player than when I started. Huge thanks to the guys at 88 Poker, such a sick company to work for. They've helped me out massively with this vlog. I literally couldn't have put this video together without their support. And also Resorts World for letting me record. It's such a sick room and the staff are great there. I could not recommend it enough. And finally, a huge thanks to my editor, Dan, who has put up with my ridiculous nitpicking without a single complaint. And not only that, but put together such a clean result. But yeah, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching my first poker vlog. I really really hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your feedback in the comment section down below and I will see you on the next one.